Hey everyone, it's Sonic Wolf and welcome back to more Pikmin 2. In the last episode, we crash landed yet, I mean, we didn't really crash land. We went back to this planet after the president didn't even let us take a break to see our families after, after barely surviving on the planet. It's just like me when I was bored. Anyway, in this episode, we're actually going to go back to the Valley of Repose and actually raise up our Pikmin and we're going to collect a few treasures, hopefully. Um, now this day is actually going to be very different to the first one because there's actually going to be a timer up on the screen. And that will indicate how long you're actually on there for, so you cannot survive at night time. Good morning workers, ready for another day of toying for the profit of your company? Well, yeah, definitely. The pigments seem to still be asleep beside the onion. What lazy creatures. They are not lazy, they carried a Duracell battery in your ship. No wonder they lack survival skills. Stand beneath the onion and press A to call them out. Um, also with the text you can press B to skip it. Oh no, it's an alien invasion trying to suck me up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, anyway, what you want to do is you want to get about 20... Um, I don't know, not exact number. We're going to get about all of our Pikmin. And we're going to go to the far side as to where we saw the red onion on the first day. So we're going to take the longer path just to get the red pellets. And then we're going to take the shorter path so that we don't take up too much time oh, and the graphics look so so amazing it, especially for GameCube standards in 2004 and even the water physics and the, like the water like design it looks so cool for GameCube standards um and then they kind of got less improved on the Wii I don't know most of the projects I play are on the Wii because, because it's my most favorite system and it's because of motion controls which I'm fine with Okay, so you want to get about most of the pellets as you can. And so while they're doing that, we're going to get that one Pikmin. I don't know why. You, you don't have to, but it's just optional. And Louie, don't stand there slacking off. Uh, you are going to come with me and help me pluck up some Pikmin when they get back. Uh, now up there is going to be a five red pellet, which we'll get into shortly, but all we're going to do is we're going to raise up our Pikmin so we can get a total up to uh, 37, I think. Yeah, because the number you're going to need is 35 because we're going to destroy that, well, not destroy, but squash this bag right here. So I will be right back. And we're back, and I thought we we're gonna have 37, but I realized I forgot that one pellet. But whatever, we're just gonna go we're just gonna throw all of our Pikmin at this bag. Now something really funny is that if you actually throw a uh, Pikmin not by missing, but if you throw them like over the bag, there will be an invisible wall just to actually stop them, which is actually kind of cool, I guess. Um, now there's going to be a bit of a strategy as to defeating this new enemy, the Red Bulb Orb. Now, there's a strategy to do this without losing a single Pikmin, which I find is going to be very risky. Is you want to do is you want to have one captain looking after the Pikmin and the other captain with no Pikmin. And going into the face of danger, destroying this Red Bulb Orb. Okay, so you want to, um, make sure, so if you have a captain with no Pikmin, you can actually press A just to actually punch it. Now, punching is really effective in this game, especially for defeating enemies alone and- OW! Um, but unfortunately, Pikmin 3, it's actually pointless. So, just to warn you on that. Okay, so you want to dodge him when he is, uh, frozen on the spot to do that. Yeah, because then he will shake and then actually knock you off so that it will be easier for him to eat you. Oh, that was close. So, ow! Okay, whoa! Okay, so the best way to attack it is just to go into his butt and attack it. So yes, go up to the enemy's bottom and then attack it. That sounds completely wrong. It ow! Hey, hey they done it. Louis is just like, wait, what happened? Like no response. How can Pikmin destroy such a massive wall? The, it, the wall is not destroyed. It is actually lowered into the ground for no apparent reason. 
And the ship is going to explain to us how the controls work. They already showed it to us last time. Uh, press C to disband the group. Um, yeah, something I forgot to mention with the, uh, the C stick. I just got knocked and just still attacked. Um, is that if you press the C button, you can actually uh, dis dis dismiss your Pikmin. Uh, and also captors as well. If it's... We'll get into new colors later, but... First of all, we're going to carry this uh, treasure, which is a, a can, a, a squashed can. Um, now, as you guys didn't actually notice that this is my third take doing this day. I am not kidding. This is my... Um, what was I trying to say? Oh, we have buds. Um, also, I forgot to mention, um, with the Pikmin, there's uh, three different life forms of the Pikmin. There's leaf, there's bud, and then flower. Um, if you planted the sprouts in the ground long enough, they'll actually change from change from bud and then to a leaf. Um, now, the different life forms of the Pikmin, it's not because of their more powerful attacks, it's because of their speed, which makes them a little bit easier for them to catch up. So you don't have to wait for them to play catch up, basically. So. I will be right back once I carried all this stuff back. And we're back. And we actually got that one pellet, which makes a total to the square root of seven Pikmin. And it's like the out of the screen. I like that can that makes that Whoa! with some eyes and a mustache. Alt utter scrap. 170 Pocos. Um, I believe in the uh, German version, I think. Well, because I was researching the treasures. It is actually called, um, Auto Trash. Yeah, that's what it's called in the uh, German version. Um, and something interesting about this, uh, uh, can. I was actually researching on what type of can it is. And it's actually called One Up. No, not physically One Up. It's the word One. And then there's like an arrow that's like pointing up. Yeah, you could say it's a bit of a reference to um, Mario, as the Mario 1-Up. And I think I'm actually missing the 5 pellet. Ugh, no. Um, so we're going to actually carry that right now. So, so we want to actually uh, raise up a Pikmin to 70, which is the maximum number we need, before we can head forward. Um, so yeah, you have to be worried about this timer up there, where my pointer is. Uh, something I forgot to mention about the pointer in... Oh, in the GameCube version, it's actually a shorter range. Um, which makes it a little bit annoying as to where you're throwing. Uh, but the Wii version is much easier because you can stretch it out a bit longer. And there's two different, uh, curses on there. The shorter one is where Pikmin is going to be thrown, and the longer one is your whistle. So that's kind of cool. So yeah, I can just throw Pikmin like this, and then whistle with the longer range. Okay, so we got 65, now it's going to change to 70. I want to leave him underground. No, I'm not going to leave him underground, because that will waste too much time, and the day will end after I did that. So we're just gonna hurry up and pluck up all these Pikmin, and hopefully you guys understand the controls. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say in the first episode, but I guess I didn't explain that properly because my commentary is really bad. Uh, anyway, so now that we're done with that, I forgot to mention that you can actually hold A at a Pikmin, and if you press the down control on the D-pad, you can actually change to a different a uh, sprout of Pikmin, so you can change from leaf to bud to flower, like so. Anyway, we're just going to go into this thing. This is a new mechanic to Pikmin 2. These are dungeons. Interesting, Warm M is welling up from the hole in the ground before you. Well, yeah, it's definitely warm in there. What could lie underground? What is wrong? You both should... You both show expressions of unease. Yeah, because we're a little bit nervous going in there. Do not fear, the leader's group of Pikmin will join you. I shall dispatch my research pod too. So yeah, the research pod, which is the top of the ship, would actually... Yeah, so, so separated Pikmin will head into the onion. Approach the hole and press A to jump in. 
So yeah, any of the Pikmin that is not in your squad or battalion would actually go into the onions immediately. So you don't have to worry about collecting them after you get out. Okay, so sub-level one, the Emergence Cave. Oh yes, the Emergence Cave, our very first uh, dungeon. Um, as you might notice though, I actually did a bit of a cut there. Uh, reason is because I had a really big interruption of like the cat screaming. Uh, yeah, that was actually the wrong time that happened and I was kind of worried. So intriguing, my hot senses indicate that this whole intruder is warm -er than on the surface. But yeah, analyzing suggestors so, so danger lies ahead. I can't even speak complex words. I have no idea what is wrong with me. Uh, now, if you press the plus button, you can actually pause, but also uh, use it as a map. But we haven't explored much, so this is where we started. If you go to the right, uh, left, I can't speak properly. What is wrong with me? If you go to the left, you can actually see uh, grids of items that we haven't collected. If you go to the right, that would say, give up an exit. Do not press that, because if you do that, then you'll actually escape out of the hole and actually drop all the treasures that you collected for nothing. So you have to do the whole thing again. So don't do that, because then it will be wasted. Um, now in here we have a new we have a treasure which is the seven up bottle cap and we have new enemies these are dwarf snowy bulb orbs now these ones are similar to red ones but they're actually white so it kind of matches their um, element and we have a mid fight interruption so yeah we have the seven up bottle cap hope we didn't lose a pigment in there so we got quenching emblem. Oh, that was close. I thought I was going to lose a Pikmin there for a moment. <laughs> um, yeah, that was kind of close. Uh, we have another treasure, which is a Mandarin. Now, when I looked at the Wikipedia for the real-life item, that is actually called an orange. That looks nothing like an orange. Well, it's similar to it, but the shape of it does not represent an orange. It isn't a perfect sphere. It looks more like a squashed sphere, which makes it as a shape of a mandarin or a tangerine or whatever country you're in. It's called either a tangerine or a mandarin. So that is not an orange. It's like the designers aren't really doing their research properly. I don't know why they call it orange, not a mandarin. It's worth 180. You can we have a citrus lump. I also forgot to mention that you can actually use the analog stick to actually rotate so you can see. Um, anyway, we have another dungeon that's the similar model to the one we just went in. So this hole, this hole appears to be quite deep. My sensors indicate more treacherous terrain ahead. Like, right, Louie, do you recall that you can adjust the camera with Z? Yeah, I can know the cameras and the controls through. well. Don't worry, all your Pikmin will follow you. It preached the hole and press A to enter it. Now, what the ship is telling us is that you can actually enter the hole even though you don't have all your Pikmin with you. So we're going in with 45 in our battalion, but we'll still have a 70 going in the hole. So. I tried to message that with dad, but he just wouldn't listen, so I just give you a bit of a hint, which is go in the hole immediately after the treasure is collected. And we have the final level, which is the last area in this dungeon. Oh, I forgot to mention a couple of things, is that you don't have any onions with you, so the onions are a bit too big to fit in there. Um. And there's no timer up there, which is the good part. And there's the top part of the ship that only came with us. And what was else? Uh, there's something I must have forgot. Um, I don't know, but we'll get into that later. And here we have the treasure, the important treasure. Now, something you guys should definitely know is that the position of this treasure is actually in three different 
position points. So I'm actually playing the European version. So it would show face first on European. If you're playing the American version, it will show the United States. If it's Japan, you can see the Japan area, which makes total sense. But how will we ever lift it? I fear that even 100 red Pikmin will be unable to lift it. How would you even know it's 100? Power of... Pointer! Uh, there we go. Power of slavery! No, we... 101? That's not accurate. Oh. Y you know what, ship? No. Oh, what's I trying to say? You know, if, if I was a ship, then... If I was a ship, then I would wait until the captains actually ask me how much it weighs. Or if you want to be like me, you used to be making videos for, I don't know, three and a half years and couldn't even afford to buy better uh, recording equipment because I just don't know which kind of good recording equipment to use because so that his annoying voice doesn't become repetitive. Um, anyway, if you walk in here, you can see candy pop buds. Now, these ones are actually violet candy pop buds, which is very different to the first Pikmin game. So, instead of throwing many, many Pikmin in these candy pop buds, which a lot of them would spread out, you can only throw five of them at a time. So, we're going to actually throw our leaves into there, because if you throw buds in these candy pop buds, then they will... Um, well, they will actually lower back to leaves. And... Uh, missed one. So let's throw one more, there we go. Now we have new Pikmin, which we're gonna see, they are... Purple Pikmin! Now these purple Pikmin are very special because they have giant stopping attack, and then they'll have the power of squishing, obviously. <laughs> Amazing, a purple Pikmin, it has hair, and they're very heavy and strong, but there are pros and cons to these Pikmin. But we'll get into that after we sprout all of them. Now, Purple Pikmin are actually really special to this game, but I wouldn't say the most useful, but we'll get into that later. Um, and as you can see here, they actually move very slow. Yeah, so they take a while to catch up because of their morbid obese, basically. Um, if you actually throw them, they'll have a very low throwing arc, and they'll have a stomp attack before after they land, and they can carry the power of 10 Pikmin, which is very, very helpful for this treasure right here. Um, also, you can carry corpse of enemies to the ship, which is very pointless because they are worth 1 to 15. So, I would not recommend you guys carry enemies to base because during the game, they are not going to be interesting throughout because all you're doing is getting 10 uh, thousand pokos from treasures because enemies are completely pointless so don't think about carrying enemies to base and I hope they're not carrying I mean I hope they're not luring the enemies to the base and look at that, that looks kind of cool on the leaves right there so um, what was I trying to say also? There was something I forgot to mention in this, uh... Oh, right, you can't sprout Pikmin when the onions aren't there. So, yeah. Anyway, we got 200 Pokos of the Spiritual Atlas. And is that a pink line on there? So, it's not even a device. It is the half part of the globe. Yeah, so we got the Northern Hemisphere of it, so we can look at the Explorer's Kit, which I explained about, I don't know, five minutes ago, and we'll go into that new area tomorrow, so, ah, uh, no, 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 you are not carrying these back to base, they are completely worthless, that's the word I was going for, worthless, um, anyway, with these new colored Pikmin, is that if you actually do the disband, disband button, you can actually see they separate in colors. Which is actually very useful, but not that useful because the problem with it is that they don't actually space apart that much. Um, and get up! Oh, come on, 
are you trying to be that Pikmin on the first game? Uh, something also interesting, if you hold the A button and then press B while holding A, you can actually switch to a different color, which is very useful as to which enemies you're trying to fight. Alright, get over here. And we have a, another new way of getting... Um, we have a new way of getting out of the dungeon. We have a geyser. Uh, don't worry, the Pikmin will not be harmed by water. It's just uh, water trying to shoot us out. So as you can see here, it has a crack up there. So we can actually get out of this dungeon. So don't worry if the Pikmin are not in your squad. So let's go in. Oh, the one thing I forgot to mention is that when you hear that air after you collected all the treasures in that area, that means there won't be any treasures in the area to collect. Treasure Savage. Cave complete. Now, there's a bit of a secret to this where if you actually um, wait for about three minutes, the song would actually change to a, a different song, but we'll not get into it in this episode is because I'm actually uh, 24 minutes in recording and I want to I don't want to actually well I don't want to actually ruin time too much it's because I did two failed recordings like one my commentary was pretty bad and second of all my commentary was also decent but also interrupted in the afternoon so I have to do it in the morning that guy's a shooter's out of, out back in base. Wow, that guy's must be very powerful. All right, we must celebrate the success of your spell locking expedition. Yeah, well, finally I can speak complex words now. I shall send a report back to the president tonight, detailing your progress. <clears throat> yeah, so I don't know what's wrong with me. It's because my throat's a bit clogged for the commentary. On the moment, Louis, since, since you will explore a new area tomorrow, today's work is done. What? You still want to work? Unacceptable. You may not realize it, but you are exhausted. Come on, we, we can still walk. We can still collect stuff. I'm back yet again. I just had a... Phone! Quit interrupting while I'm recording. Yeah, first I had an interruption at home with the cats, and then I just had a phone call, and then it kind of paused the recording. So, I will not jinx this video being, like, terrible. I will not jinx it. Or, this video not being good, I will not jinx it. Anyway, suck it, Red Bulber! There's no Pikmin for you to eat. I just... I cannot believe that I had a few interruptions while I'm recording. I hate recordings like most most of the time, so I only do them in the morning. And that really sucks. Anyway, we've got um, 60 red Pikmin and 10 purples. And we still got a no death run, which is pretty cool. But well good. Especially the red bobble trick I showed you. But baby steps, Solom first Olimar. Plan well, and don't worry about me. Our adept is with Happy Hockatate. Savings and loan. After all, besides, there's nothing left to responses. So, ha! Um, I was gonna say, ha, but I was like, ha! As the, um... I have to make it as an American accent, mixed in with my Australian, so... Oh yeah, that do 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 that kind of music. So, we're going to go into the Wakity Wood in the next episode. Uh, let's see what we have for Piclopedia. We have the Red Ball Borb. We have the... Oh, Snow Ball Borb. That's what it's called. I thought it was called Dwarf Ball Borbs, but... They're actually snow. I mispronounced the name. Oh, also, there's actually plants there, which is... Uh, reasonable, especially for... Uh, well, dungeon designs. And we have Violet Cane Pop Buds, I remember the name. Uh, let's check out Louis Notes. This this convenient purple flower secrets a, a dark, flavorful oil that eliminates the need for salad dressing. <laughs> Man, Louis Notes are always the best. Uh, let's check... 
Oh, I didn't actually know that. If you actually press one at an, an enemy, you can actually make him turn into stone, which we'll get into later. Oh, you can also do the same for these ones. Let's see what Louis has to say. Best grilled and served hot over a bed of fresh spinach and crumbled blue cheese. Hmm. Sounds very nice. Uh, what is Louis going to say about this? Plumbing specimens are best roasted whole, stuffed with a lime and a slab of bacon. Hey, <laughs> be based frequently to ensure a magnificent moist punch. Yeah. Um, yeah, Louis Nurse can also explain about plants. So, mildly poisonous, may result in naji, headache, fever, nati, natique, chest pains, paralyzed, loss of bone density, moisten, moodiness, fell rage, s sauciness, drifty, delaying, strokes of brilliance, and untimely doom. <laughs> yep, so plants are dangerous. Well, I love plant-based food, but not this kind of plant. Um, let's go to treasures and see what we have. So we have a citrus fruit, we have a can. Um, I believe the cap- I believe the ship's notes will be funny. Um... No? Oh, right! If you complete the game, then the ship's notes would actually tell you. I don't know. Um... Let me check... Nothing. That's right. Let's check nothing. <laughs> um, anyway. Next time on Pikmin 2, we are gonna go to the Awakening Wood and hopefully... Uh, collect more ship parts and go to a couple of dungeons and see what we can see. So, see you guys there.